Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of the Surge podcast. Um, I figured that the best place to start would be a brief introduction as to who I am. Uh, my name is Saud Al Zaid. Uh, I'm currently living in Kuwait. My background is in general surgery, trauma and critical care. And that's why I made this podcast. As to the real reason why, well, you'll have to check back around about episode 11 if I last that long. So... One of the main reasons why I actually did this podcast, in all seriousness, was my introduction to free open access medical education. And um, I heard about it from a friend back in Ireland. And no, it isn't the same person who coined the term. Uh, It's a completely different person, far less famous. But just as passionate about it, probably. And um, this person was a friend of mine since medical school. And... We sort of used to tinker around with computers back in the day, and it, his passion kind of reminded me, and the way that he described it kind of reminded me of um, open source software and how it all started back in the day. So my first introduction to open source software was Slackware Linux. And as you can see, this is the installer that, uh, the original installer that uh, I used back in the 90s. And after a couple of hours of tinkering around and doing your own compiling and things like that, you ended up with a screen that looked like this. To you guys, this might look like something completely useless, but in my eyes back in the day, this was a functional computer that ran for relatively cheap, and I got all the software for free, including statistics software that used to cost hundreds back in the day. And uh, Excise wasn't that bad either. From there, it sort of evolved into something that looks more like this. And now this is a desktop of Mint Linux that I stole off of Wikipedia. In the interest of full disclosure, I will admit wholeheartedly, I'm not using Linux right now. I'm lucky enough to have a Mac to be recording this on. But as you can see, there's a lot of software that came out and started off as open source software and remains so to this day, and it's quite functional. And not only is it functional, but things like Firefox, VideoLAN, WordPress, Suzy, MongoDB are the backbone of our modern technology. And I think that free open access medical education will have those same strengths. And the reason why I say that is because it's free. Everybody can reach it. Everybody can contribute to it. And when you go to the conferences, conferences like SMAC are exactly the same, with the exact same passionate, smart people who are willing to break the rules, bend them, and change them. And keep coming up with concepts over and over again that I see at other conferences geared towards open source software. And it really is something that, that, that I feel the two mirror each other so well and complement each other so well that, that there was just no way I wouldn't try and contribute to it in some way. Um, by the way, side note, yes, my phone is buzzing in the background. Yes, I will fix it at some point. I apologize if it's annoying. So why podcasts? Well, that's much easier for me to explain. Whereas Twitter gives you a one-liner, allows me to give you guys a one-liner. Instagram might give you a picture of things, maybe a 15-second video. Blogs are kind of like a narrative, and I rarely have the patience to type that much. Podcasts, podcasts to me, are kind of like Netflix. They provide me with amazing storylines, free-form structure. They're on topic most of the time. You can customize your own playlists, and you have unlimited content that you can binge watch whenever you want. And not only can you binge watch it, but you can pick and choose what you think is cool and relevant. For us working in the emergency slash acute care slash critical care slash trauma setting, that's just a recipe for pure gold. So in my mind, podcasts and free open access medical education, it's just awesome. There's no way around it. And and I think that it's going to be the way of the future for many of us. Because it's up to date, and like I mentioned prior, it's free and it's easy to use. It's as easy as opening up iTunes. So chances are, if you know how to use iTunes, if you know how to use your iPhone, you're going to know how to subscribe to this channel. The people who produce the content are dedicated. They put in the work. They put in the research. They present at conferences. They get into debates. They're willing to let you access them and for them to access you in a completely appropriate social media context, Twitter type of manner, is what I'm trying to say. 
and more importantly, it's geared towards the pros. Now, why I say that is because, or, well, let me rephrase that, sorry. A while back, I listened to this podcast, and I provided the link specifically for this reason. And and Scott Weingart's podcast sort of cemented the idea in my head that, that podcasts are the medium for experts to divulge their information. They're the medium for experts to have that discussion. And they are the medium where you go from understanding what's in the textbook to becoming a skilled expert at applying key concepts. And that transition was never traditionally easy. The closest thing to it is probably either a music instructor or a hockey coach. Because to get to that transition from knowing how to do it right to knowing how to explain it so that other people can do it just as well as you do, the only people who know how to do that are coaches and conductors. Everyone else tries their best, but won't provide that consistent result when they educate people. And the reason why is because of the amount of passion, A, they have, and B, because they allow you to build that knowledge base independently while still providing a narrative and still providing a structure. And I have to say that if you haven't listened to this podcast before, you probably should. I'm going to add the link uh, at the end of, uh, of my own as well. How long will each episode be? Well, that depends on what we're discussing and how many people are available to talk. Um, I'm hoping to invite more and more experts that, that are far more expert than I am at certain niches in trauma and critical care uh, to give me their opinion and, and to provide some of the narrative here. And um, from my perspective, if I'm talking on my own, you won't want to listen to me for more than 20 minutes, believe me. So hopefully each episode will vary between 20 and 30 minutes, maybe even less uh, if there's nothing to say, such as in this one. And hopefully we'll take it from there. Thank you all for listening. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank other sources of uh, open access medical education and podcasts, such as Rebel EM, the SMAC conference, the SMAC team in general, who were phenomenal the last time. Scott Weingart, of course, of EM Crit. Uh, how could I forget? I apologize profusely, sir. And um, everybody else on Twitter, I guess, because uh, I'm the new guy on the block, and Lord knows I have a long way to go. Thank you, and have a good day, everyone.